Welcome to Austria, whereby the snow globe is a genuine Austrian invention, whereas the schnitzel is not. Business. Situated in the middle of Europe, with a population of quite exactly 9 million, Austria has as main industry branches specialized engineering, here particularly traditional engineering and also in the area of automobile, aerospace, iron and steel and chemical engineering, as well as the production of wood, paper and food and drink, here particularly with an orientation to bioproducts. Very important in Austria is also the financial services sector, but Austria also provides specialized healthcare industries. It is a very traditional country with a strong personal culture, for due to its small size, you are all but warranted to meet more than once in life, and therefore the creation of stable, reliable and positive personal relationships also in business is paramount. Austria's legal system. The laws, of course, are made in the parliament, and in Austria, being a federal republic, this is a two chamber system, whereby you're having the main chamber, the Nationalrat or National Assembly, where laws are proposed, discussed, and decided upon, as well as the Bundesrat or Federal Assembly, which is confirming the laws from the perspective of the republics. The head of the state is the president, though actual political power lies more vested in the chancellor, who is also the leading figure of the government. As to the Austrian constitution, the situation is indeed quite interesting. This is not one document as in other countries, although of course there does exist the federal law on the constitution. But besides it, any norm in any other law, which has been decided upon with a two-thirds majority in parliament and a quorum of one half of the MPs being present at least, is a constitutional norm, even if the other rest of the law is not constitutional in nature. And in that fashion, both data protection and banking secrecy are considered constitutional norms. The first being part of the constitutional law itself, and the banking secrecy norm being decided upon with the mentioned requirements. The latter is in particular interesting as it is embedded in the federal law on banks, which in general terms is not a constitutional law, with this exception. This does show you though that Austria is highly focused on privacy and secrecy norms, which is perchance, also in the case of the banking secrecy law, not all that surprising given that on Austrian bank accounts it has been estimated that there have been over 50 billion euro in assets, around three quarters of them belonging to foreign nationals, which drives such requirements. As to Austrian law in relation to IT, and in general terms also, it offers some interesting peculiarities, such as that the sale of incorporeal goods, such as software itself, is absolutely possible. You do not need to embody the software in anything in order to sell it, nor do you need to form any analogies to the sale of corporeal goods. Software itself can be sold that way, absolutely straight as anything else. Moreover, in terms of liability, Austrian law offers actually good protection against slight negligence insofar as you can, among companies, simply exclude it. There are no essentials of the contract which would countervene that and, and stop you from doing that. There have been, though, in recent times, legislational changes, in particular the introduction into the civil code of expectable properties of software, 
which the provider is, is expected to comply with. We have not yet observed any practical effects of this legal change, but it is a matter which should be keep kept under observation. As to the court instances, there are three in a civil law system. However, there are four kinds of courts, and depending on the amount of your claim, it may begin on one or another level and then continues for three instances, whereby if your claim is of a higher amount, the final instance would be the Supreme Court or Oberster Gerichtshof or OGH in German. The Supreme Court is in so far particularly interesting as it may decide in the matter. It does not determine any questions of proof and should it deem such insufficiently clarified, it may send down the case for further determination to the first instance. However, if it does decide the case, the decision is being published and serves as a guidance for future disputes. Not only is the decision itself published, but often excerpts of the decision are published separately as guiding sentences or general principles, guiding further the application of law in the future. And if that does seem to you as giving a sort of touch of common law to the legal system, where court decisions clearly determine the, cor the course of future disputes, then I assure you, you are not far off the truth. Curiosities With regard to legal science and jurisprudence, one of Austria's foremost contributions has been Hans Kelsen's Reine Rechtslehre, or Pure Theory of Law, a very important work in the framework of legal positivism, which later also influenced the concept of law by H.L.A. Hart, which is perhaps better known in the Anglo-American sphere. The idea of this theory is that legal norms of a legal system should be interpreted according to the rules and the principles of that legal system, and not according to the natural law views and own ideas of the lawyer, which have a tendency to lead to unsystematic and all-over improper results. Thereby, legal positivism can serve to vouchsafe the stability of a legal system. This is a computer. And indeed, the so-called Meilüfterl. A famous contribution of Austria to IT, created at the end of the 50s and beginning of the 60s by Heinz Zemanek and colleagues, it was one of the first computers in Europe and is named jokously in deference to the American whirlwind machines, whereby Zemanek remarked that the resources will not suffice for a whirlwind, but they might be enough for a May breeze. Despite the limitations of the machine, it was used in early artificial intelligence research, as you can see also demonstrated by the chessboard on the lower left, but also for research connected to early forms of neural networks, also named Learn Matrix or Learning Matrix. And finally, how many psychologists do you need to change a light bulb? Only one, but it takes time and the light bulb must be willing to change. And with that, thank you for watching and Servus.